All right, good afternoon. I am uh, literally straight off the practice field today, so we, uh, we're we on a slightly later schedule this week just uh, due to school not being in session. So uh, ha happy Thanksgiving to everybody, and uh, really good win for us on Saturday versus Cincinnati, finish up home slate 5-1. and one. Uh, I thought we controlled the game on both line of scrimmages. Uh, I thought that's where we won it. Um, really happy for all those guys that, that walked on Saturday, played their final home game. Uh, Glad they got to finish with a win. Um, I'll kind of recap the game. Uh, special teams, I thought the positives were this. We only punted one time, um, and uh, I thought our coverage was good. Our kickoff coverage has been much improved. They tried to bring one out, and I think we tackled it inside the 20 and, and got a and got a block in the back penalty as well because we, cause we did a really nice job with the technique that we coach, and they had to start within the 10. Our field goal protection was good. Field goal block, we got really good push. Thought we should have blocked one. Um, Special teams-wise, you know, Ali's got to keep that punt out of the end zone. You know, I think we had a chance to pin him inside the 10. He kicked it in the end zone. Um, and then our punt return group's got to do a better job giving Preston some space. You know, we did a much better job of that early in the year. Uh, not good enough on Saturday. Uh, defensively, I think the positives, you know, fast start, four punts uh, to start the game. Um, and I thought we held we held a – I think they were fifth in the country in rushing coming in the game. We held them well below their average, um, both rushing and total offense, well below their average. And, you know, Kiner, who I think is really good running back, uh, we held him to under 60 yards. And so I thought our run fits were, were really good. I thought we got a bunch of hats to the ball. We still missed some tackles, um, but we had guys there to cover it up. And uh, we got improved. Got a, we didn't finish very well in the fourth quarter. And so we, we had some different guys out there, but we still got to play – the way you're supposed to play, and then we got to get some takeaways. You know that, you know they did not turn the ball over, and and we had our hands on two really two big missed opportunities on interceptions that both of those maybe may have resulted in points. So uh, offensively, uh, positives we ran the ball for 424 yards and uh, averaged 9.8 yards per play, and so um, held the ball for 35 minutes, eight of 11 on end of possession downs, and so uh, a lot of explosive plays. You know, the things that, that, that weren't good enough, we had two penalties that killed drives. The first drive of the game, we're driving, we get a holding penalty, and then we miss a field goal. Second one, we get a, a tripping call, which was the right call in Jaheim, and then we throw an interception that the that should, ball should have never been thrown. And, uh, and so we got to clean up those things. But uh, finishing up, Cincinnati uh, Players of the Week, Offensive uh, lineman of the week is a guy that was really challenged all week. Probably had the toughest matchup on the entire field against their best player, and he graded out 95%, had 43 production points, 10 great blocks, two knockdowns, and uh, and Zach Frazier, just, he played really, really well. Um, and that'll, that'll be a game that'll help him as as he gets into senior poll and, and all the draft stuff. So um, special teams player of the week, we did co. Uh, special teams this week. We really didn't do anything that would necessarily change the game, but we didn't do anything to hurt us. But uh, two guys that over the course of the last few weeks have done a nice job. Uh, first one is Day-Day Hawkins. Um, he's really disruptive on our punt block team in the middle, and then he's on our kickoff team. You know, he's 270-something pounds running down on kickoff and does a nice job there. Um, and then E.J. Horton, who's been um, a gunner on our punt team, and, and running down on kickoff. He's the first one down on kickoff, first one down on punt, doing a really nice job in those coverage areas. Um, our defensive player of the week, playing his last home game, Lee Koba had 10 tackles, a sack, a quarterback hurry, and really played a great fundamental game, his best fundamental game that he's had. Um, offense player of the week, two, two obvious pick choices, didn't want to choose between, uh, but Jaheim, had 21 rushes, 210 yards, a touchdown, a reception for a touchdown of 75 yards, just a kind of a huge uh, game for him. And, that, and that's been coming. You know, he's been really productive here in the last month of the season, um, month and a half, I should say. Then Garrett with a bounce back, 11 rushes, 154 yards, three touchdowns, 12 of 19 passing for 210 and a touchdown. So big, uh, really big bounce back game for him. I was, I was happy for him. Um, the Blue Collar Award that we give on offense, Traylon Davis and Jaquay Hubbard. Jaquay played his best game of the year. He played a lot of football here. He's really physical in the game. And then Traylon uh, was really a key. We ran a lot of counter where he was the second puller. And I thought he was – I thought he played his best game. And uh, defensively, Jared Bartlett played his best game. May not show up in the stat, but really big reason why we fit the run game so well. 
was how he played to the boundary. And we cleaned up some mistakes that he made, and he ran out and played really good fundamental and, and played did his job within the defense. And then Ben Cutter. Ben Cutter played well. Uh, only had four tackles on the day, but did a nice job spilling the football, getting it back to other people. And so uh, our scout team players, uh, C.J. Cole on offense, uh, who, who starts on, on two special teams for us, turned into a really good special teams player. Uh, on def- uh, scout defense player, Corey McIntyre, uh, who played in the game, really ha- should have had a sack. Uh, but he's, uh, he's coming along. He's going to be a really good player here. I'm, I'm, I'm glad we get to redshirt him, but he's going to be a really good player. And then our scout special teams player is Taran Fitzpatrick, who's from uh, George Washington down in Charleston. And so he did a nice job. And then our, uh, our juice award, our energy award, Grayson Malashevich, who's uh, battled back from, from a couple injuries and, and, and back on our punt return team starting, but he had great energy in the game. So that's kind of a, a wrap-up on Cincinnati. Moving on to Baylor. Um, it's, this is uh, – I tell our guys, if you want to be a pro, this is the week where you're kind of in training. There's no class in session. It's just kind of football. And I guess the secondary piece would be food. But uh, it's uh, it's all football. And and so we're going to go to Baylor. It's a tough place to play. You know, we haven't had a lot of success there as a program. And uh, a lot of respect for, for Dave Aranda. You know, I think as a person, as a head coach, and, and as a defensive mind – uh, a lot of respect for him. If you look at him from a special team standpoint, first thing is their special teams analyst was here with us for two years, uh, Tyler Hancock. And uh, uh, they're really good on punt. Uh, they've done a nice job of, of, of covering. Uh, their kickoff returns have had several explosives. You know, they, they mix up the returners. Um, and then their punt return has been the, the real bright spot for them. And they've got one of the receivers – um, number 34, Josh Cameron, and he's a big kid, man. He's 6'1", six, six 215, 220 pounds, so bigger than your normal punt returner, but he's doing a really nice job, you know, and he's had multiple explosive returns. And then they've been um, – they've, they've ran a lot of fakes, field goal fake, punt fake. Uh, they've, of, they've tried an onside kick. I mean, they've done a bunch of different things here in the last few weeks, so we've got to be aware. Uh, offensively, uh, Coach Grimes does a really good job. You know, they're 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 unique in our league. Uh, probably them and Iowa State are the most similar, but a lot of twelve personnel. They even get into some thirteen personnel with three tight ends. Um, their tight ends have a multitude of skills. Uh, they do a lot of shifts and motions, and so I think alignment will be the the key, the real critical point for us. Um, and they've got a good wide receiver crew. You know, talked about the Cameron kit, uh, number thirty four. Uh, Monterey Baldwin can really run. He had a big game against us last year as a true freshman. I mean, he's he's fast, fast. And then the guy that's really came on is uh, is Jackson, number eleven, and probably been their most consistent. And he can run downfield threat. Uh, they've they they've done a really nice job of passing the ball um, up toward the top of every passing stat in our league. And they got two good running backs. You know, the Reese is really fast. He's he hurt us last year. Um, then they got. Uh, the Dominic Richardson uh, that transferred from Oklahoma State, and he's a really tough, hard, physical runner. Uh, defensively, like, like I said, a lot of respect for Dave. He's done it for a long time. We've played at multiple places. Um, their D.C. and I work together at Kentucky. Uh, Matt Pallage, he's a really good football mind. Um, their D, for me, it starts with their D-line. They're extremely well coached. Uh, they got great size and length. Um, they rotate a bunch of guys in there. They can rush the passer. Um you know, they're going to play in a lot of different fronts, uh, a lot of simulated pressures, uh, five, four, five-man pressures, uh, mix up their coverage looks, and uh, it'll be a challenge. They'll, they'll, they're going to definitely try to confuse Garrett, always have a really good third down package. And so the key for us is is we've got to have a good week, you know, and, and then we've got to handle the travel and, and handle playing at night down in a venue that we struggled at. So we've got to be able to answer that. And, and we're playing, other than Oklahoma game, we've played our best football down, down the, uh, in the last, last part of the season. We've got to continue that and get better on Tuesday and Wednesday and, and, and go try to get our sixth conference win or eighth win of the season. So with that, uh, questions. John, you start us off there, bud. I'm starting you off. Yep. Okay. Greg's down. Kevin's down. Bob skipped on Saturday, so you're up. Yeah, well, let me think of one. No, um, just just overall, um, are you happy with where uh, your offense is progressing with Garrett and the way you've been able to play off of different things with his running game and so forth? So if, if, if that Oklahoma game went still stuck in my mind, I'd, the answer would be yes. But, like, um, you, know, you know, that was a setback for sure. 
but but I, you know we're becoming be kind of who I thought we would be when when we kind of made this shift. You know, three three or so games left in the year last year, um, where we're making it difficult to defend the entire field. You know, you know from a run game perspective, from sideline to sideline. You know, we're splitting the defense, doing a bunch of different things, um, off some base run plays, and then vertically getting the ball downfield. And so, um, and it's all dependent on on how how our quarterback plays. You know, and he's played other than Oklahoma game. I think his level of play has continued to get better and better. Um, and other than one real boneheaded throw the other day, he's taking care of the football. And so, um, yeah, I think there's things we can continue to get better at. But I like kind of where we're heading offensively. Real quick here, um, you know, uh, is it nice to be able to have explosives? You, you know, you think of the baseball analogy, it takes three hits to get a run. Instead of a three-run homer, you're starting to get those three-run homers. Yeah, well, we have. And, you know, early in the year we were having these drives. It just took forever. Well, it's good for time of possession. Our defense isn't playing a whole lot. But um, it's hard because, you know, one one negative play knocks you out. And so – um, we are. We feel like we've got some, you know, guys that can make explosive plays. Garrett is got by far the most, but Jaheim, CJ, um, and then Devin has shown the ability. Cole's shown the ability, but our young wideouts, you know, those are the guys that I'm kind of excited about here as we finish up season heading into bowl prep. Traylon Ray, Hudson, Rodney, you know, Preston's been really consistent, but I'm, I'm excited to see those young guys and how they finish up in the next next two games. <laughs> yeah. Have you changed, or has football changed, or what's changed? Yeah, I laugh because um, uh, a guy that coached me <laughs> sent me a text the other day, and uh, and and said uh, he was just laughing, you know, because you know early early on, you know, we were, you know, when I started doing this back in calling plays back in '08. You know, we had a really good run there. We were top five in passing for several years. And now um, to kind of flip it, we had a really good rushing year at Troy my my last year there too. Um, our starting quarterback got hurt and we were, and we were a predominant run team. But, um, yeah, it is. It's It's been kind of a 180. Um, you know, I think this is – I think this is what this, this is best for this team. Um, I think that – you know, and, and, and history's proven this too, here is the most effective way to win is with a dual threat quarterback. And so, you know, I think that and, – and the game's changed too. You know, I think there's some changes in the game that um, that have pushed us to this point too. But, yeah, it, it, if you asked me 10 years ago if we were, you know, going to be fourth in the country in Russian, I, I, I wouldn't have probably thought – didn't have the vision for that. But – but we've recruited well on the offensive line. You know, our quarterback is, is a is a game changer, and we've we've got multiple running backs that can play, and our tight ends have done a nice job. So, um, yeah, I think the pieces we have in place right now is is we're utilizing them in the best way. To Bob's point, though, it matches the climate that you could encounter here too, right? Yeah, you know, it's um, you know, I think the the climate is a factor. You know, I think that, um, you know taking advantage of the people that are that are drivable from a recruiting standpoint too. Um, I think that that's a factor as well. You know, you mentioned it. Is it just coincidence that the, the really good West Virginia quarterbacks, you know, Major, Pat, are guilt fit? I mean, Skyler Howard even. Is it just coincidence? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's been some good passers too. Some, you know, whether Geno or Bulger or Hostetler. I mean, there's been a little bit of both. Um, but I think that, um, you know, I think the dual threat, this is to me kind of where, where I landed on this, um, you know, last December is, is really kind of, if you go back and you look, it just, it gives you a, a chance. Like you don't have to be perfect. You know, sometimes if, if you have a passing quarterback and you're playing people, somebody that's more talented than you, that you got to be really perfect. Um, or you got to do some things that, um, that are non-traditional as far as rub routes, you know, different ways to protect the passer, you know, things like that, where if you have a dual threat, you don't the, you don't have to be as perfect. And so that's kind of that's kind of where we ended on it. 
You know, um, so CJ, we took him out early uh, in the third. Um, he he will not practice today. He didn't practice today. He won't practice tomorrow. We'll get him going Wednesday. Use Doug in the same, you know, give them a little bit more time to come back. Um, I think both uh, will end up being ready to go. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll know more after Wednesday's practice, but I feel like both will probably be ready. Um, we won't play either unless they unless they they can be close to 100. You know, CJ warmed up well, so we gave him a few carries. But um, as it cooled off, he kind of he kind of got stiff, so we took him out. Um, and then defensively, just trying to think, anybody in particular? Those are kind of the two. So Yates came out early in the game. Um, he's uh, he's going through a protocol. I, I think you know. Hopefully he'll be back. We'll see how the next two days go. You know, you talked a couple weeks ago about <clears throat> the ball hawk rate stat and the aggressiveness and actually leading the country in that, but that it also shows you're missing turnovers. And then that was something you brought up as an issue in this past game despite the win. How would you evaluate that since that stat was put out there? Yeah. Um, and then are you – is there something you can do to try to change that? Or? Well, I think it just goes back to you got to catch the ball. You know, and this is going to be overly simplistic, but – um, two things um, in why we're dropping interceptions. We're leaving, we're leaving our feet, which means we're jumping on balls that you don't need to jump for. Um, and when you do that, anytime you leave your feet, your, your level of vision changes. And so if you're not a natural ball catcher, uh, it makes it even more def- difficult. And so the other thing is our, our hands are apart, which is very elementary. But if your hands are apart, you got less chance. And so you got to get – if it's above your waist, you got to get your pointy fingers together. If it's below your waist, you put your pinkies together. And uh, Dax and I work on it pretty pretty standard. And, uh, and, and those are really the reasons why we're missing those opportunities. Um, and so has changed? Probably not. You know, we dropped two. You know, we continue to work ball drills every single day in the secondary. Um, but you got to be able to execute those fundamentals in a game situation. Yeah, you know, I I think the kid's really tough. Um, he uh, he's got hit quite a bit this year, and he steps up in the pocket. I thought he uh, they dropped some passes in the first half versus TCU, but I thought he was really on. You know, he had a couple um, balls on post balls that he hit guys in stride. Um, he gets the ball out fast. You can tell he has really good control of what they do. Uh, I like his skill set. I really do. He's a good athlete. He can run. Um, you know, he, uh, he probably hasn't gotten, because what their record is, he probably hasn't got talked about as much, but the kid can play. He can, he can spin the ball. You had those three first plays all go to the true freshman, and it seems like that was by design. What, what about those three guys just add something else to this offense, especially as they continue to develop into November? Yeah, so I think they're, they're guys that came in, uh, Jaheim got here early, and so he was a little further ahead, um, they're all three really good friends, which is coincidental. But they're all they're all good friends. I think they all got uh, high talent, and, and they've worked and bought in. You know, it's uh, and so Rodney is is a guy that uh, multiple sport athlete. You know, he's got to continue to get stronger. This off is going to be big for him. He knows that, and and really and continue to work on his craft running routes. He, he hasn't had to do it a whole lot. Uh, but he's shown the ability that he can he can make plays with the ball in his hands. He can break tackles. He's really elusive. Um, and and he, when he learns and understands route running and he gets stronger, I think he's got a chance to be special. Uh, Traylon Ray's really come on. I say this every time we talk about him. He didn't get here until July, end of June, right? So he hadn't been in college very long. And so he's going to get – I think this offseason, like when we get into spring ball, he's going to be a really different guy as far as how he can – he'll probably put on 10 pounds and he's going to get faster. And I think he's got a chance to be an elite outside receiver. And then Jaheim, it's starting to come down, coming together for him. And, um, you know, he's not real tall, but he's strong. And he's compact and, he's a, and he breaks tackles. And he's really shifty. And I think the offseason, what it's going to do for him is going to give him straight line speed. He's, only, he's not slow right now, but I think he's even going to get faster. One more about the dual threat quarterback. Is that going to change your philosophy? Or does that – have you thought about that, about how you're going to – recruit kids in the future to fit what you're doing right yeah. now? Yeah, it, it has. You know, if you look at who we have committed, um, you know, both of those guys uh, are dual threat guys, and, and that's that. we're going to continue to stay with that. With the uh, improvements in season on offense, some of us get your quarterback healthy and be able to practice and all that, but would you 
say you're doing doing your stuff better. Or are you doing just better stuff? It just seems like you have more like, bells and whistles, like noticeable plays that seem yeah. to work. So what really, and I think, and you may ask this a couple weeks ago, um, but early in the season, when, once Gary got hurt, we had to be really careful because um, it wasn't Nico's lack of ability to do what we're doing. He can, he's more than capable, but we had to be really careful with running him because we, we didn't have anybody with any experience behind him. And so, um, so we had to go in kind of and be uh, a lot more conservative than we really wanted to, even in the run game as far as not doing a bunch of the run, the read stuff and things like that that could potentially put him at risk. Um, and then I think as we've, as we've kind of moved through the season – is you know our comfortable our comfortability with what Garrett can and can't do, and an understanding of what he sees in the run game, um, and also I think that our running backs have made significant improvement, and you can look at uh, yards per carry for each of the guys that's playing. Um, I don't think our blocking's necessarily changed. I feel like we've blocked at a high level all year. Our tight end play's probably been better right at the point of contact. Um, but we've blocked really well all, all year. What we're doing a better job of at running back is is our paths on our on our to get to the line of scrimmage are better. Uh, we're doing a better job setting up our blocks, and then we're breaking tackles. Um, and so I think those are probably the two areas at quarterback, just understanding kind of what he does best, and then making sure we have two healthy ones, and then our running backs just improving their play, and then from a from a game plan perspective. Uh, we probably we are doing a little bit more. Again, I think that goes back to Garrett growing and, and us having a lot more confidence in him. About just putting a lot on his shoulders. When do you feel comfortable doing that? Is it after a period of time? Is it do you see things consistently? It just seems like a lot yeah, to, so, to say about someone. Yeah, so really we started like back in the spring and and he's kind of a trial and error guy. You know, like He's going to, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. And then, you know, I, he says that, and I'm like, ah, you know, we'll see if he really gets that or not, you know. like, And uh, and so you trial and error a little bit in spring, and then you do the same thing kind of in your OTAs in the summer and then in fall camp. Um, and um, kind of cautious in the Penn State game because I wanted to make sure that he had a level of success because, you know, in that environment versus that defense in, his, in the first game of the season – could have done some real harm, you know, could have set him back confident level. And then we were getting ready to kind of break wide open and kind of do what we've been doing against Pitt when he got hurt. And and I thought, you know, he had kind of like – he had the Penn State game, had confidence coming out there. He practiced really well for two weeks. He threw those deep balls really well versus Duquesne, you know, after the after the uh, lightning break. And so his confidence was really coming along and we were getting – and then the injury hit. And so – and then after TCU, once I was, once I felt like okay, he's healthy, he can run. That's kind of when we were like, okay, hey, we're gonna go, you know, we're gonna win games because of him. Yeah, so I, I kind of just been to clarify that his health and ability almost in, not to say the early season was in any way treated like an NFL preseason, but it. He needed games under his belt to kind of get that progression. That was what allowed you to be even more aggressive as a play caller. Well, no, I think like we were, we wanted to make sure that he had a really good understanding of what we were trying to do. You know, I think that we were we were careful in the Penn State game because you know that could it, that could have been a real detrimental game to his confidence level because how good they were um, and in that environment. But he played well. And he missed a couple throws, but he played well. And then he hit those, you know, three or four bunch of yards versus Duquesne. And then um, after the injury. So, it, you know, going back to that TCU week, he, he didn't practice all week till till Thursday. And, and so he goes out and plays and played pretty well for not practicing. And I think for him, he was like, okay, I'm back. My, my ankle's fine. Um, and I, mean, I can do this. And he made some some wild runs and, and a couple of wild throws. Like if you remember that touchdown run he had versus TCU, where he just pulled down and scrambled, you know that was by far like four or five, like uh, almost like almost a full four four miles per hour faster than he'd ran in like two two and a half weeks. And so that was a wild run. And if you remember, we uh, we had a two minute drill right before the half, and um, it was one of those deals. We had like thirty seconds to go. 
and we could have just taken a knee. And I was like, and I, I told the guys on the headset, I was like, listen, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go try to score here. Uh, let's 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 see what he's got. And he threw a BB on a dig. And set up a field goal. He had two bang. He had a scramble, and then a, he threw that dig, and set up a field goal that we made. But then it was taken away because um, Malone jumped off sides. Um, but really, from that point forward, I was like, okay, all right, he's ready. Let's let's go. Let's go do this. Real quick, uh, at Penn State game. You went inside and turned the noise up. Do you go inside and turn the heat up this week? Yeah, I haven't looked at the weather yet, John. Like it's probably going to be warmer there than it is here. Um, but you know, it, yeah, it's, uh, we practice inside today just because we're trying to keep them, you know, minimal running. It's easier to kind of manage workloads inside. Um, but we'll, if it, if it's going to be warm there, that's, we've done that before. You know, we did that when we went out to Arizona for the bowl game and, and, and we'll do that. This is more an NFL thing, but is this like a trap game scenario for you guys? You know, the team with a bad record and you... I don't, I don't want to overlook him at the end of the year. Yeah, I'm not sure we need to be overlooking anybody. Um, you know, I, I think t- to me it's just about finishing. You know, this is – got a singular focus this week. Only game, there's not a- any school stuff to worry about. Um, and and they've really dominated us down there. You know, not just uh, – I think one in four is a program down there. And we went down there in rules last year and had a chance to beat them. And they beat us right at the end of the game. And they had their a really good team. And then they smoked us down there in 21. Um, and so, you know, we understand it's a, it's a tough place to play. You know, you got to stay about an hour away. And so there's some, some things that we got to handle from a, a travel standpoint that are a little unique. Um, but for me, it's just for us, we got to continue to play well, you know, and that's what kind of is that Oklahoma games in my crawl. Not that we lost, but we just didn't play very well. And so for me, it's about playing good football. And, and that's really what the push is this week, to go play good football. You heard this team is driven by either inexperienced or younger players, even though you do have some veterans. Do you have to have any conversation about, like, a lot of bowl projections are out there, certainly that you clinched being in something and kind of put that away? Because so, really, yeah, so what we talk about is really, you know, there's a season for everything, right? There's a season when people are going to worry about NLI, NIL and there's a season where they're going to worry about transferring and there's a season where they're going to worry about bowl. Well, we're in the season of we have one game a week. We're in the regular season and we have to have a singular focus on this week and simply playing our best. And, uh, you know, we didn't handle our last road trip very well. And so that's kind of an extra incentive there. Um, but that's all we're talking. We're not getting not getting very carried away with it. But Mike, you had a question. Yeah. You only had 12 guys walk. I know that's not like a complete list, but that's a small number, I think. And then mm-hmm. do you – I know you said that you weren't sure, but like Zach's one that you know. Are there any others that are like you're sure about that they're gone or is it that wide open? No, I think that – well, a lot of those guys are expired eligibility that walked. Um, and here's how I handle this, and this is probably over sim- simplistic, but this is – in a team meeting, I say, if you want – who whoever's going to walk for senior day, you'll stay so I can talk to them and see who's going to walk. And then that's how that's how we take who's going to walk. You know, it's not uh, – and, you know, a few years ago I kind of made a big deal whether – and you learn, you, you, you make mistakes and you learn. I kind of made a big deal about who was going to walk and who wasn't, and that was going to mean if you were coming back or not. And so um, I don't think that's the best way to handle it. I made a mistake then. So now just kind of we'll handle all those decisions after the regular season as far as – you know, who's coming back, who wants to use the extra year. Um, but those are the guys that, that wanted to walk. You know, like Doug Nestor walked last year. You know, he came back. Um, you know, we had other people that – Dante did it twice. You know, I'll call them senior day veterans. Um, but uh, they uh, – so just because somebody walked doesn't mean they're not coming back. Um, but it just means that, you know, I think that they're kind of thinking through what, what their future is going to be. I know this goes against the whole singular focus – piece here, but when it comes to the transfer portal, what positions are you guys going to be focusing on? Ask me next week. Okay. Ask me next week. <laughs> okay. that, that's what – here's what you got to remember. Like, as a coach, i got to be singular focused too. So, uh, I've got people that work on those things, and, and we'll deal with that probably as soon as I get on the plane to come back from Waco. So, uh, I won't dodge that question. I won't dodge that next week, but this week I will. All right. Y'all have a good Thanksgiving. Thanks.